That's me, Mr. Monkey, Monkey Mechanic, doing the best job in the world. Fixing things. It's Hot Boy Scoop! Wonderful! Usually I don't have a crowd or cheering from the peanut gallery. So why the big fuss this time? Well, it all started this morning. The day started like any other, with a garage bell ring. Ah. I had a visitor. I love having visitors. It was Mr. Lion. He seemed upset. Mr. Monkey, I cannot believe it. I simply cannot believe it. Believe what? That! Look! Well, what do you know? Your horn's gone. Where did it go, Mr. Lion? I have no idea. Yesterday it was there, and today, in its place, I found this. A roll of packing tape? How very odd. I had made Mr. Lion the perfect little horn. And I had bolted it down real tight. How could this horn just disappear? And why was it replaced with a roll of packing tape? Thank you, Mr. Lion. Now there's only one thing to do. I'll make you a new horn. But first I'll need my... Trusty Monkey! My monkey wrench is missing! Something fishy was going on. Mr. Lion's horn was missing. And so was my trusty monkey wrench. I had a funny feeling that they weren't just missing. They were... Stolen! <gasps> stolen? Mm-hmm. There's a thief in town, and I'm gonna find him. Mr. Monkey, Monkey Detective, was on the case. Say, Mr. Monkey, do you mind if I join you? I'm always game to solve a mystery, and it gives me a reason to wear all these disguises. Let's go! And with that, our search for the thief began. First, we found Miss Poodle. Her hair was frizzy, and she herself was frazzled. Was she our thief? Oh, Mr. Monkey, my hairbrush is missing. Nope, she was not our thief. Have you seen it? I'm afraid not, Miss Poodle. What do you think happened to it? I'm not sure. But when I reached for my hairbrush this morning, I picked up this instead. Ha-ha! <laughs> oh, my! A ball of string! It's a clue and a delightful play toy. Mr. Lion, I didn't see you there. Do you mind if I take this? Go right ahead. So I took the ball of string and the picture of Ms. Poodle's beloved hairbrush and promised to help find it. Sometime later, we came upon Ms. Owl. I was surprised to see her awake at this hour. She's usually a night owl, very suspicious. Maybe she was our thief. Who? Who? Mr. Monkey, I need your help. Have you seen my sunglasses? Or not? I usually keep my sunglasses right here, but all that's inside is 
Wrapping paper. Another clue. I need my sunglasses for flying and landing. Just look at this terrible parking job. So close to this brick wall. Sorry, I haven't seen your sunglasses, Ms. Owl. But I'll take this photo and the wrapping paper and keep my eyes peeled for you. Then, we stumbled upon Coach Moose, who was acting suspiciously. Oh, hi there. You're just the monkey I was hoping to see. Really? Why's that? Did you maybe want to give me something? Or some things? Uh, no. I need your help to fix my problem. Wouldn't you know it, I can't find a Junior Rangers ice hockey trophy. It used to be back here, but in its place I found these scissors. Strange, eh? Indeed it was. I took the scissors and told him that I'd keep a lookout for the trophy. Careful there, Mr. Monkey. You've got a T-Rex tail in you, and he looks hungry. It was troubling, to say the least. Everyone in town was missing something. We had clues, but no idea who the thief was. And now I had a partner dressed like a daisy. So, why all the different disguises, Mr. Lion? Because I don't want to be recognized. Makes sense. Mr. Crocodile? Ahoy, Mr. Monkey! Are you here about my missing anchor? Your anchor's missing? It is indeed! What's curious is how a heavy anchor could go missing. Just like that! What's even more curious is how this giant daisy has suddenly appeared on my dock. Yes, it's been a very strange day, Mr. Crocodile. A lot of things in town are missing and have been replaced with other things. Like packing peanuts? These were in the spot where my anchor was. Another clue. We were getting closer. I could feel it. Mind if I take a look around for more clues? Be my guest. Ugh. Look, footprints. Footprints? I can assure you those aren't mine. I have cute little crocodilian feet. And those are not them. Then this could be the clue we're looking for. The thief's footprints. Let's follow them, Mr. Lion. Come on! A daisy named Lion. Curiouser and curiouser. We followed the footprints along the dock and headed down a deserted alleyway. Then suddenly, the footsteps stopped. How can footprints just stop? I don't know. And just like that, we had a chase. After him, Mr. Lion! We chased Mr. Chameleon, but he was one sly reptile. We thought we lost him but Mr. Lion had an idea. My, what a big roar you've got, little old lady. Give it up, chameleon. Give what up, Mr. Monkey? You know what I'm talking about. Where's the hairbrush, the trophy, the anchor, the sunglasses? My horn! And my monkey wrench. I have no idea what you're talking about. But we tracked your footprints. 
And you're acting all sneaky, zigzagging around town, climbing fences. You must be hiding something. Not at all. I was simply soaking my feet in the water. And then I saw how late it was. I needed to get home fast. But you know the old rhyme? Step on a crack, break your mother's back. The dock was full of cracks. I didn't want to hurt my dear mum. But what about hiding against the wall? And jumping the fence? I'm a chameleon, a camouflage. I took a shortcut. Is that a crime? Well, if it is, then lock me up, Mr. Monkey. <sighs> Looks like we've hit a dead end. We're never going to find the thief who left a box, a ball of string, packing tape, wrapping paper, scissors, and packing peanuts. A box, a ball of string, packing tape, wrapping paper, scissors, and packing peanuts, you say? I might know someone you should talk to. Squirrel, what do you know about this box, ball of string, packing tape, wrapping paper, scissors, and these packing peanuts? Tell us everything you know. Oh! What a cutie wooty. Boop. Oh, now that you mention it, I do remember a customer who bought all the packing materials I had. Who was it? Sure, someone new in town, a little guy. What would a tiny new neighbor want with all those packing materials? I had some thinking to do. what we know. We have a number of things missing. We found a few clues in their place. Our suspect is male, so he's not these two. He's also little. And he's new in town. And at that moment, I knew who the thief was. We had to move fast. Our suspect had flown the coop, but I knew where to go. Ms. Squirrel, you tried to throw us off your scent, but we know you took everyone's things and left items from your store behind. You're the thief. There's nobody new in the neighborhood. Yeah. Well, tell that to the new guy next door. It turns out Miss Squirrel was telling the truth. There was someone new in the neighborhood, and his home was wrapped in clues. Uh, sorry for calling you a thief. Our mistake. A thousand apologies. Hey, uh, can I help you? We're looking for some things that we think you may know about. Like, uh, what? Like these. I promise you, Viking, I don't know what you're talking about. Then what would you call those? They look suspiciously like a boat anchor. A hockey trophy. My horn! And my trusty... Monkey wrench! <laughs> you got me. You got me. I did it. I took it all. Every last thing. I'm so sorry. We found our thief and everything we were looking for. But I had just one question. 
Why? And then he sang like a canary. Well, I like packing things. I love it, actually. But I'd already packed everything I own. So I started taking other things to pack. I don't know how to stop. <sighs> I need help. And help is what I did. I came up with a plan. Mr. Lion and I helped Packrat start a packing business. Now, he could pack anything he wanted and didn't have to steal anything ever again. It was all on the up and up. The case was tied up in a neat little bow. Well, almost. We just had one more thing to do. Everyone got their things back. And for me, it was time to get back to work. To think, if I hadn't cracked the case, I almost couldn't do my job. The best job in the world. Mr. Monkey, Monkey Detective! Mr. Monkey, Monkey Mechanic, was packing for his trip to the Monkey Mechanic Convention at Banana Beach when suddenly the garage bell rang. A visitor. Mr. Monkey loves having visitors, and he knows exactly who it is. It's Mr. Chameleon. Hi, Mr. Chameleon. Well, hello there, Mr. Monkey. All ready for your trip? Oh, yes, I can't wait. Thanks again for taking care of the garage while I'm away. No worries, Mr. Monkey. I came prepared. <laughs> now remember, if anyone comes in with a problem, just tell them I'll be back in the morning and we'll help them then. No worries, Mr. Monkey. Your garage is in good hands. I've got this. Terrific. See you in the morning. Bye, Mr. Monkey. With that, Mr. Monkey leaves for his monkey mechanic convention. Mr. Chameleon, Chameleon Mechanic. That's got a nice ring to it. Oh, Mr. Chameleon has a visitor. Who could it be? Why, it's Coach Moose, Ms. Squirrel, Miss Cow, and Mr. Husky. Hiya, everybody. Welcome to Mr. Monkey, uh, Mr. Chameleon, Chameleon Mechanic. How may I be of service? Hello. Hi, Mr. Chameleon. Is Mr. Monkey here? I have a problem. Oh, Mr. Monkey went on a little overnight trip. He'll be back in the morning. But, uh, maybe there's some way I can help you? After all, how hard could it be? I can help all of you. Tell me your problems. Well, my car broke down, and it won't move, and I've got to go buy more nuts. Car won't move. Got it. I've been taking my sled to the supermarket, but when I pull my sled home, all my groceries fall off. Food falls off sled. No problem. My hockey team wants to skate in the summer, but there's no ice to skate on. Mm-hmm. A problem that seemingly has nothing to do at all with your vehicle. Piece of cake. There's so much corn to harvest, and I can't get all the work done if I take breakfast, lunch, and dinner breaks. Your tractor needs to be working while you eat. Shouldn't be a problem. So, so can, can you, you help, help us, Mr. Chameleon? Mr. Chameleon? Absolutely. I can fix all of it. I've totally got it. I just, uh, need a plan. Oh, 
I know. I'll head over to Mr. Monkey's workbench. That's how it works. He usually heads over there and comes back with a plan. All right, I'm here. And I guess I'm just supposed to wait for a plan to arrive. Shouldn't take too long. Being a mechanic is super easy. I don't know what all the fuss is about. Hey, a pencil. Maybe if I start doodling on this blue paper, the plan will arrive. <laughs> ah, brilliant, Mr. Chameleon, if I do say so myself. Ah, no, that's not a brilliant plan. That's just a lovely rendering of me on a skateboard. Maybe the plan is a uh, telescope. Ah, <laughs> I know, trampolines. That'll solve all the problems. Wait, space age technology. They're always talking about that. I should try polys or I had bouncy shoes. Bananas. Bananas can fix any problem, right? What about this wrench thingy? He always seems to use that. But what do I even do with it? Hey, Mr. Chameleon. How's it coming along there, champ? Oh, Miss Squirrel. I'm glad you're here. I figured it all out, Miss Squirrel. Come and look at this. The repairs just keep coming, Miss Squirrel. There's no solution because the repairs just keep coming. They won't stop. They'll never stop. Okay, I'll just leave you to it then. <laughs> Wake up, Mr. Chameleon, dude. What? What? What's this? Uh, you seem to have lost your gosh darn mind there, Mr. Chameleon. So uh, we got to talking, you know, and decided to fix each other's vehicles, thinking it might help you out there, eh? Is that a tea kettle? Oh yeah, see last time I was here, Mr. Monkey put a bunch of tea kettles on my snowmobile. And I figured Miss Cow could use one to make tea or hot soup while she drove her tractor. That way she could eat while still driving her tractor and get all her work done. Wow, great idea. Sure is. And last time I was here, Mr. Monkey hooked me up with solar panels to make my tractor move without gas. I reckon solar panels would make Miss Squirrel's broken down car move. Amazing. And last time I was in, Mr. Monkey made boxes for all of my nuts when I kept losing track of them. So I did the same thing for Mr. Husky. Now his groceries won't fall off his sled. And Mr. Monkey made me wheels for my sled, so I could use it in the summer. So I thought Coach Moose's hockey team could use wheels on their skates. Now they can skate in the summer. Ah, uh, but I didn't help at all. Some Mr. Chameleon, chameleon mechanic I turned out to be. Actually, you did kind of help. Once you fell asleep in the middle of the floor, we realized that rather than waiting for someone else to solve our problems, we could solve them together. So what you're saying is, you couldn't have done it without me. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, Mr. Mr. Chameleon. There go some very satisfied customers. Good morning, Mr. Chameleon. Things sure look like they were busy around here. How'd it go? Easy peasy, Mr. Monkey. You could say it pretty much took care of itself. Anyway, I'll be on my way. Gotta see if there's anyone else out there who needs my help. It's all about teamwork, Mr. Monkey. Teamwork. Welcome home. And with that, Mr. Monkey gets back to work. What happened to my workbench?
Mr. Monkey, Monkey Mechanic, was eating a... cob of corn? When suddenly the garage bell rang. A visitor. Mr. Monkey loves having visitors. Who could it be? Why, it's Miss Cow. Hello, Miss Cow. What brings you in today? Good morning, Mr. Monkey. I've got a bit of a mess I'm dealing with. A mess? What is it, Miss Cow? It's Bessie, my old tractor. She's dirty. Hmm. It looks pretty clean to me, but let me double check. Mr. Monkey checks the tractor. He checks the hood. He checks the roof. He even checks the dashboard. <laughs> so, what's wrong with my tractor, Mr. Monkey? Absolutely nothing. It's clean, pristine, not dirty at all. Well, what do you reckon this is? <coughs> oh my! <coughs> that is dirty! <coughs> is it always that smoky? Yes, sirree. All the time I put gas into the fuel tank, and all day long my tractor puffs out black smoke. I'm a thinking that's bad for the environment. <coughs> Not to mention me. <coughs> Mr. Monkey agrees. Exhaust like that is very bad for the environment. What can he do? He heads to his workbench to come up with an idea. Let's see. Miss Cow drives her tractor all day long in her cornfield. And its exhaust is harming the environment. Mr. Monkey needs to figure out how to stop dirty exhaust from coming out of Miss Cow's tractor. Mr. Monkey thinks about how other machines and vehicles are powered. Some, like Miss Cow's tractor, get their power from gas, which creates very dirty exhaust. Some machines are powered by electricity. They don't create any exhaust, and that is good for the environment. Some machines are powered by the sun. They don't create any exhaust either, and that is good for the environment too. So, how can Miss Cow power her tractor without harming the environment? Mr. Monkey has an idea. He just needs some materials. He needs a bunch of solar panels, three pieces of metal, a bunch of nuts and bolts, and of course, his trusty monkey wrench. Mr. Monkey gets to work. He puts two solar panels on the roof of the tractor. Then, he uses four bolts to fasten them down. One, two, three, four. Phew! Mr. Monkey's work is done. So, what's this, Mr. Monkey? Some newfangled space age of power thing? They're solar panels. They take the power from the sun and turn it into power for your tractor. No gas required. And no gas means no dirty exhaust polluting the environment. That's right, try it out. It's not working. It will in a minute. Since you're out in the cornfield all day, your tractor will always be powered by the sun. Dirty exhaust. Thank you, Mr. Monkey. Another satisfied customer. And with that, it's time for Mr. Monkey to get back to his banana. Uh, or cob of corn?
Mr. Monkey, Monkey Mechanic, was looking at the banana-shaped moon. When all of a sudden, the garage bell rang. A visitor! Mr. Monkey loves visitors. I wonder who it could be. It's done! It's finally done! I have finally finished my rocket ship! Oh boy, Mr. Monkey loves rocket ships. That's amazing! Uh, but who might you be? Oh, sorry, where are my manners? I am Miss Mole, astronaut. Nice to meet you, Miss Mole. I'm Mr. Monkey. What can I do for you today? Mr. Monkey, all my life I have lived underground in a tiny burrow, but I want to explore and see what's up above me. So I made a rocket ship, and I'm going to fly it into outer space to explore the universe. But there's a problem. I want to see everything, every planet, every moon, and every star that's up there. But when I'm inside my rocket ship, I can't see anything. Mr. Monkey, can you help me? Mind if I take a look at your rocket ship and see what the problem might be? Go right ahead, Mr. Monkey. First, Mr. Monkey checks the nose of the rocket ship. It's nice and pointy, very aerodynamic. Next, Mr. Monkey checks the seat. It seems to be in good working order. And finally, Mr. Monkey checks the control panel. Oops. All those switches and buttons seem to be working just fine. Well, Miss Mole, I'm not sure what the problem might be. You've built yourself a very sturdy ship. Oh, well, I'm not worried about it not working, but I still won't be able to see anything when I'm up there. What am I going to do, Mr. Monkey? Mr. Monkey has an idea. Off to his workbench. Miss Mole lives underground, but she wants to explore everything above ground especially outer space. The only problem is she can't see anything while she's inside her rocket ship. Mr. Monkey needs to build something that Miss Mole can see out of, kind of like her glasses, but for her rocket ship. Hmm. Mr. Monkey has a plan. He just needs a few supplies. First, he'll need one round piece of glass. Then he'll need a round piece of metal. Finally, he'll need 10 bolts. And of course, he'll need his trusty monkey wrench. Mr. Monkey gets to work. First, Mr. Monkey cuts a round hole in the hull of the rocket ship. Then he places the round piece of glass into the hole he just made followed by the round piece of metal. Next, he secures it in place with the 10 bolts. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 bolts. And with that, Mr. Monkey is finished. What is it, Mr. Monkey? It's a window, Miss Mole. Now you'll be able to look out of it so you can see everywhere you go. Oh, thank you, Mr. Monkey. I can't wait to see all the amazing things in our universe. Speaking of which, let's get you into outer space, Miss Mole. Ready for countdown, Miss Mole? 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, Four, three, two, one, blast off! I can see you, Mr. Monkey. I can see the whole garage. I can see everything. This is amazing. That's so bright out here. Another satisfied customer. And with that, Mr. Monkey goes back to his telescope. <laughs> <laughs> 